guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna spray some fruit trees and we're gonna do some garden clean out. So we're standing here in the orchard. We've got an apricot and apple, two peaches. And then swinging around the back side of the flower shed, we have a nectarine and a plum. And then we have another nectarine, more established than the first one we looked at a Honeycrisp apple and another apricot. So there are nine trees out here and then we have a pear espalier, an Asian pear, behind the greenhouse that we will spray and a miniature peach tree, the one we just moved in yesterday's project. It's in a little pot. I think we gotta plant that one out this year. But anyway, it is sunny right now. It is gonna get overcast, but there's no rain on the forecast. And this really is the perfect day to get our fruit tree spraying done, at least this application. So we spray our fruit trees when they're dormant to control insects and diseases. Uh, we use two different sprays for that. We've got the copper fungicide, which is the disease preventer, takes care of things like on the front here, it says black spot, powdery mildew, downy mildew, early blight, and there's some other things if you were to read the label. And then we have our all seasons horticultural and dormant spray oil. And this is what will take care of insects and diseases as well but different ones than this. So in our area, we try to keep our fruit trees on a three spray schedule when they're dormant. And this could be different depending on where you live, what you're growing and what you're spraying for. So do keep that in mind. But usually the first application will go on right after they drop all of their leaves. Uh, usually that means like late November for us. And then the second application is on a nice day in January, which the high today is 54. It just started to get windy though, which you really want to spray on a, on a, a still day if possible. So we're just gonna be careful and stand downwind from our spray. And then the third application goes on uh, on a nice day in late February. So usually every year I only get to my last spray application. I miss the first two. I just don't think about it or get busy or whatever. I don't know what the case is, but I feel like as long as you hit that last spray, you are usually okay and that's what all of the orchards like fruit tree growers in our area they say as long as you hit that last one you should be good also these sprays can be used in season as well as a dormant application but you're going to mix them differently so depending on what time of year you're spraying what you're spraying what you're spraying for read the label make sure you're mixing it up properly so both of these used as a dormant application we do two and a half ounces per gallon of the horticultural oil and two ounces per gallon of the copper fungicide. I am gonna be using a pump sprayer today, which I thought last year was gonna be my last time I was gonna be able to use that, but I don't think my trees, I think they're small enough still, I can still use that, which means I can mix both of these in the same sprayer and just do one application. You can do hose end application, which it's really nice if you've got bigger trees because those hose end applicators, they shoot so far. I think some sh uh, shoot like 30 feet. But in that case, you can only put one thing in the hopper at a time because these have to be mixed at a different ratio. You can set the dial based on which one, like what ratio you need to be mixed at, and these are different. So we get to mix these together because I get to measure them out and meter them out in the water in the tank, if that makes any sense at all. I have to go over to a hose faucet. That's where my sprayer is. And we'll get these all mixed up and we will get them applied. Oh, the sun feels so glorious. Is it still right now? Pretty still. Oh, how nice. <laughs> okay, so here's my pump sprayer. This is a two gallon sprayer. Uh, it, I have it labeled fungicide slash insecticide so I don't get it messed up with anything else. And then I use one of these little measuring cups to measure out my stuff. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so two and a half ounces per gallon. We've got a two gallon sprayer, so I'm gonna do five ounces. And this one, two ounces per gallon. So we're gonna do four ounces in our two gallon container. Oh, that fills up fast and gets heavy. <laughs> okay. We are going to pump this up. And when we spray, our goal is just to completely saturate this tree. You want to do the top side, the sides of them, the undersides especially. That's where a lot of bad stuff can hang out. Want to get the whole trunk. And this apple tree is looking so good. You can see all of these spurs where we're going to have apples this year. Oh, 
I'm so excited. And the breeze completely stopped. What a gift. Oh, so let's just get this done. It does not take very long, honestly. It takes a minute or two to mix up your stuff and it'll probably take us 10, 15 minutes to get these all sprayed. It's just remembering to do it. So top sides, undersides, really get the trunk all the way from the bottom to the top and we're just gonna move ourselves around this tree and do all of the branches. these fruit trees are done and most of them are almost dry already which is perfect that's what you want you want to make sure it's a nice day and that it's not going to rain for a while afterward and I know it looks like we're going to get rain but we're not supposed to and it's been doing this all day it gets kind of dark and then it gets bright again so as long as the the spray dries we're good I'm also going to be putting a reminder in my phone to come out here end of February on a nice day and make my third application. And really the copper fungicide and the all seasons oil takes care of 99% of my problems out here in the orchard. The only thing that we have to deal with is coddling moths in the apple trees. That's the only other thing uh, that I've struggled with. And I'm pretty sure I forgot to mention in the list of things that the copper fungicide handles or takes care of is peach leaf curl. That's a huge deal. And that's something that I have struggled with the very first year in this space and on my miniature peach tree. Um, once I got my trees on a nice spray regimen I haven't dealt with that since. So the coddling moths in the apple trees are the other thing that we'll be addressing a little bit closer this year because they pretty much wiped out my crop last year. What you have to do for those I mean there's different methods that you can approach it with. There is like that that clay oh, what's it called? Uh, it's a clay that you can spray on the trees but it does put like kind of a white film on the trees. You can um, spray a contact spray every two weeks through the end of July but we are trying not to spray anything as in here especially in season when you know all the pollinators are active and then another way you can approach it is by bagging your fruit which I think I'm going to do that this year because the apple trees are still really small and really manageable if I thin my apples bag the ones I want to save then it doesn't allow any insects to get to the fruit and I'm hoping that that works now the uh, dormant spray might help with some of the eggs because they can winter over and I do make sure I mean it's just natural when the tree is dripping and you're spraying enough for the tree to drip the ground around it's going to get some as well but I kind of spray around the base because some of the eggs can drop and hatch in the spring when it gets warm and then they can crawl up the trunk and start eating on the fruit so I'm just hopeful that by remember to doing this dormant oil application or dormant spray application twice and that by bagging my fruit I won't have to do any in-season spraying and I will still get apples that I don't have to cut the worms out of to eat <laughs> What a bummer. Okay, we're gonna head to the Paris Valier and the peach tree by the greenhouse and get those done real quick. Fruit trees are done and it always feels good to check that chore off the list. So now we're back out here in the South Garden for more garden cleanup. Exciting, right? <laughs> so the other day we worked on this flower bed here and started in on this section, but I didn't have enough time to complete it. So I think we'll just go ahead and take care of this and then maybe hop over and clean up a few roses. Not a whole lot going on in this interior section. And I'm trying to go kind of section by section to tackle this. Now there's a couple of interesting plants in here that require pruning that doesn't seem right when you're doing it, but it makes for a much more productive plant. And the proudberry coralberry is one of them. So, I mean, this is a woody shrub. You come in here, you take a look. Woody shrub, it grows about four by four, produces the most gorgeous pink berries, which are still on the plant. I mean, they're not pink anymore, but the berries are still there. Some of them are white. Hold on. 
We got a little blush of pink on some of them. This plant does the best with a hard prune. I mean, we take this one down to about a foot tall every single year. And we come in after we've cut the main portion back and I cut out any of this wispy stuff. Like the kind of puny looking branches and we leave the good ones. And it feels wrong every time I do it. <laughs> every time I go in to prune this shrub, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're just setting this plant back and we so are not. This whole canopy right here grew last year from the 12 inch prune that we did uh, last spring. It's just amazing how quickly this plant grows and how productive it is. Uh, the other plants in here, we've got Echinacea sedum, Amsonia, which will all be a cut back to about an inch above the ground. And then we do have a hibiscus. This is a dinner plate hibiscus. This one, I can't remember the variety, but it's got dark leaves and pinkish blooms and it stays smaller much more compact than a lot of the other varieties but at the moment it is competing with the canopy of this prairie fire crab apple uh, which you can see the persistent crabs see they just hang on until new growth pushes them out i'm actually surprised that the birds haven't been cleaning cleaning this one up but either way i don't really love the color of this with the color that the prairie fire crab has so i'm going to be moving this eventually but we'll get the plant cut back a little bit and then we've got a firelight hydrangea in here which looks pretty good. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna come in, follow the branch back just to a nice looking set of buds, which you can see right here. I'll cut it right above that. And I just like to make kind of a nice rounded shape. And then same as with the coral berry, I'll come in and prune out anything that's punier. Any of these little branches come out I want to leave stuff like this. And then for the roses that we have in here, I've got one there, which I need to move this one over to this section here because they're all the same variety. I'm not going to do a full prune on these uh, and I'm not gonna defoliate them until a little bit later, probably sometime next month uh, in February. But I'm gonna just kind of clean up the tops and clean up some of the branches so they're a little tidier. And same will go for I've got some reminiscent pink roses, which are gorgeous, guys. I love this rose. I will cut those back a bit. This is one of the cypress that we planted last year. It's a goner, I'm gonna pop that out. The weird thing is, I think there are saguara cypress. There's two varieties that were sent to us last year. Uh, I planted two in containers behind the Hartley and those still look amazing. The two I planted in the ground, both of those didn't survive. <laughs> so weird. Usually it's the other way around. We've got some of the honey roses. Is it like flavorette honey? Is that right? I don't know. There's three right here. There's sedum to cut back. I've got some uh, David Austin roses in here that just need a little touch up, but that's pretty much it. And I'm so thankful that these clouds are not amounting to anything. In fact, between the barn and coming out here, I stopped and I watered all the seedlings in the studio and the sun came back out again. Now it's overcast again. <sighs> That's what I want over me right now. Blue sky. Using the same tools that I normally do. I've got my shrub rake right here. I've got the hedge trimmers to make quick work of perennial cut back, my kneeling pad and my Felco twos. So let's get this done.
We are done for the day and almost done with this side of the South Garden. First thing we cut back was that coral berry, which looks way different. And it does look fresh. It looks like it can breathe and it will have lots of energy to send a new growth. There were some daisies right back behind it that we'd already cut back, but I cut them back and cleaned them up a little bit further. Uh, sedum, cut those back, kind of cleaned up the rows a little bit. And then came this direction and cut back the echinacea and the sedum. I forgot underneath the Amsonia, Oh, it's a bunch of thrift. This whole flower bed needs a rework, honestly. I mean, this thrift here looks just like the grass. I mean, it's just so, so similar. And when I planted them, they were way smaller. They were in plug form. So there was some distinction. There was space between the plant itself and the grass. <laughs> Russell, goodness. But now that it's bulked up, it's a lot closer to the grass. And when the string theory Amsonia is grown, it has the same exact texture. They all look very grassy. What was I thinking <laughs> when I planted them together? I don't know. So I think the thrift needs to move. I think going forward, I need to never plant it next to grass. It needs to be next to a stone pathway or some kind of uh, something harder, not grassy. Uh, the hibiscus needs to move. And then, uh, you know, last time I explained, I need to move six of the serendipity alliums that are just too tall, too close to the grass. So this whole area just, yeah. Plants are healthy. They just need to be shuffled about. I need to go through and trim this crab apple. I should have done that today, but I already put my stuff away. I'll do that later. And then we did this interior little space here, kind of cleaned up the roses. There's nothing much going on in this space. Cleaned up these three roses right here. These three roses, the three David Austin's in here, which I took back quite a bit. Cut back the sedum and that's pretty much it. And we did end up with a pretty full gator. So now all we have to do on this side of the South Garden is this outer flower bed. So we'll start here in this corner and we'll just work our way around to about the lamb's ear over here. This corner has the most amount of perennial cutback, which you can see better from the other side. There's some hollyhocks to clean up, lantana to pull. There's a whole bunch of perennials and baptisia back there. And yeah, these perennials. So it won't take us too long to finish this side up. And once we're done on this side, we're gonna hop over and start on the other side of the South Garden. But it really has been, I feel like a productive day. Super happy with how things are kind of tidying up out here and glad that we're on the right track with the fruit trees. And it should be an interesting year with those in terms of, you know, the apple production. We had such a good year of fruit yields last year. Uh, I don't know that I'm gonna have to do a tremendous amount of pruning because I did go in late in the season um, Just because we had a big storm that was due to come in with big gusty winds like really strong winds And it was at a time where my fruit trees were really full of fruit So I went through and thinned a bunch of fruit out and then ended up coming through and taking off a bunch of weight in branches So like the nectarine tree I was looking at it today and I thought you know I, need, I want to top some of the the upward growth, but I don't think there's a tremendous amount of interior pruning we're gonna have to do but i'll bring you along when we do that anyway thank you guys so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one bye